Hello, I am Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. Today we are continuing our series on high voltage hybrid electronics and we have a inverter converter assembly out of a 2017 Toyota Prius Eco that we purchased to disassemble and get, get familiar with. The inverter converter assemblies on most Toyota hybrids are serviceable meaning there are some internal parts that you can change if there's a problem with them rather than changing the entire inverter converter assembly. So let's get familiar with uh, some of the external features of the inverter converter assembly here. This would be the front of the inverter converter versus the front of the vehicle. And there are two coolant hoses that would connect right here. This is a liquid cooled inverter converter uh, unlike the Honda ones uh, the Honda IMA inverter converters that were behind the back seats that we have a separate video on those but we have one hose coming from the transmission uh, the transaxle itself the transaxle cooler which is this bottom hose right here and then it goes in and cools the DC to DC converter assembly in the bottom of this inverter converter housing and then it comes up through this black plastic transfer pipe and goes in and cools all the IGBTs, the insulated gate bipolar transistors, and then comes out and goes to the coolant reservoir for the electronics on this vehicle. Uh, a word of warning on these, uh, when you disconnect the hoses, don't disconnect these other uh, pieces unless you are told to do so. Uh, because if you pull out some of these plastic pieces at the wrong time before draining the coolant out, you can actually let coolant get inside the inverter converter assembly into places where it should not be. And then you've got to replace the entire unit. All right. On the top of the inverter converter, as we can see here, there are two electrical connectors. As part of the removal uh, procedure for the inverter converter assembly, we will disconnect the low voltage battery, the, the 12 volt battery. And on the fourth generation Prius that this is out of, that battery is up under the hood finally, rather than back in the back of the vehicle. Um, so we disconnect the 12 volt battery. We disconnect the little service plug grip on the uh, 207 point two volt lithium ion battery that I have a separate video on how to service that battery then we disconnect these two electrical connectors here now on the other side on the back side of the transaxle here there are two more electrical connectors we have one electrical connector here that is from or that connects to the air conditioning system compressor so the electric air conditioning system compressor, this plugs in right here. There's two bolts that hold it down and you would need to undo those bolts and pull this connector out. It has two male terminals in the connector for the air conditioning compressor. Then there's another connector just like this, except as two female terminals rather than male. And it is the long 16 foot Two wire cable that goes all the way to the uh, lithium ion battery in the back of the vehicle and so the safe procedure for making sure that the all the high voltage in this inverter converter uh, has been discharged is you will undo the two bolts that hold the two wire harness from the battery you'll undo those and slide back this electrical connector here and then you will put a multimeter across there of, on volts, a voltmeter, and make sure that there's no voltage on these two wires. Uh, the, if the contactors in the uh, hybrid battery junction block are doing their job, there will be no voltage on there because the positive contactor disconnects the positive terminal of this connector. The negative contactor disconnects the negative terminal of the two wires that come up to the inverter converter assembly. So we've got two electrical connectors in the back here, one for the high voltage battery, one for the air conditioning system. Uh, 
and I'll have a separate video on hybrid and electric air conditioning systems a little bit later. Okay, then on the side, the driver's side of the inverter converter assembly, let me tip it on its side here, there's a great big electrical connector that goes down to the P610 transaxle. Uh, and it has six wires, the three, two three-phase uh, sets of wires for MG1 and MG2. MG1 is this, the starter and the generator. MG2 is the traction motor that moves the vehicle down the road. So there'll be two sets of really short three-phase cables that go from the inverter converter down to the transaxle that's just right here below it. This inverter converter assembly bolts to the top of the transaxle with a couple of uh, brackets. There's also a high voltage interlock circuit here. If I pull off this tape right here and look down inside, we can see the six electrical connectors for the uh, motor generator one and motor generator two. But then right here in that little elect round electrical connector, there's just two, a two wire connector. That is the high voltage interlock circuit that if you didn't disconnect the 12 volt battery or the uh, service grip, service plug grip on the high voltage battery. Uh, when you unplug this, it opens the interlock circuit and the contactors are shut off anyway at that point. Uh, just from unplugging that, that's an input to the hybrid uh, battery control module to shut off the contactors. Okay, now there is a cover on the top, a cover on the bottom, and there's a seam between the upper and lower housings on this inverter converter assembly. All three of those are sealed with the little form in place gasket sealer. It's gray out of the factory. It will be the black uh, when you go back together because uh, apparently they don't sell the gray uh, to you. But in the service information, there are instructions on how to remove these covers without bending them uh, because this uh, sealant is very, uh, it does a very good job. Um, when everything is nice and clean and dry, when you put that sealant on there and the right amount of sealant, they call for a three millimeter diameter bead of the sealant and nothing more. Um, it makes a wonderful seal and it's very difficult to remove if you're not careful. So obviously the first thing you would need to do is to remove all of the bolts. So I'm just going to slow, slowly back them out with my electric impact here. Uh, I'm not going to give it full throttle. I'm just going to back them out slowly. I'm going to keep track of the bolts that go with the cover here. Now there are some pry points where you are supposed to come in with a pry bar and pry up on this sealing surface. Now you have to be very patient. You can't just come in and give it a big uh, pry. You have to come in and just tiny bit of pry and then wait a little bit and wait a little bit and eventually it'll break loose. If it doesn't break loose, take a flat razor blade and slowly start working it into the edge there and then it will start breaking loose. And when you're all done, you want to make sure that your cover is not all bent up because uh, it won't seal again uh, afterwards, of course. So I will keep the cover with the bolts that it, that it came out of. Now, once this cover is removed, these two electrical connectors right here allow the transaxle uh, inputs and the data communication and power and ground and so on from the rest of the vehicle to connect to this circuit board right here. And this circuit board is called the motor generator control computer and it is serviceable. But it's very delicate. It's very, <laughs> you, you've got to be very careful removing it so that you don't break it during uh, removal and so that you don't uh, 
break the new one that you're going to put in. And of course, these need to be reprogrammed once you uh, put them in. So we have uh, all of these little Phillips head screws that have little rubber uh, isolators underneath them. And this red mat that I have the uh, inverter converter sitting on is an anti-static mat. It has a ground wire right here that I've got clipped to a steel uh, table leg over there. And then I'm going to wear a anti-static wrist strap here as I remove this and install it so that I don't cause an electrostatic discharge that damages uh, any of the circuits uh, in the inverter converter. Okay, so I'm going to put on the, the wrist anti-static wrist strap. Okay, with the wrist strap on, I'm ready to start disassembly. But there's one safety precaution I forgot to do that I should have done before taking this cover off. And that is over here on the side of the inverter converter, we have the two electrical terminals that were connected to the high voltage battery. Those two terminals inside of the inverter converter uh, assembly here uh, connect to a number of things but one of them is something called a big smoothing capacitor and in parallel with this smoothing capacitor is a resistor to discharge that smoothing capacitor but it can take a few minutes to discharge so if we take our multimeter and test it on another battery uh, or voltage source to make sure that it's uh, functioning the meter leads are good and the, and the multimeter is functioning as it should, which it is. Uh, then you can come in and measure the voltage on those two terminals. Now, if you've waited the amount of time that the service information has told you to wait, then this voltage should be zero. So we've, <laughs> this has been out of the car for uh, several months, so it, it should be zero, but let's just Go in here and touch both terminals, zero volts is what I'm reading. And the capacitor is fully discharged. There's no danger of me getting shocked uh, doing anything internal on this thing. Now, technically, I should have been wearing my high voltage safety gloves uh, at this point, but I knew um, that it was already discharged because I've had this apart several several times in preparation for this video. But in real life, you need to have those high voltage safety gloves on. All right, now to remove the motor generator control computer, there are, let's see, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There are 19 vibration dampening electrical connectors on this circuit board. These little vibration dampening electrical connectors need to be need to have their lock released and they need to be lifted up. Now when I first saw these, I thought, oh, I can just do that with a pocket screwdriver. And I tried on a few uh, because I figured I'd, I could do it without the special service tool that it was called for. And I think I broke a, a, a couple of the tops of the little unlocking tabs. Well, then I decided, well, I better, I better get the proper tool. So this is the proper tool. This is a Toyota special service tool. It is part number 09905-00040. And this tool is made specifically for coming in and pinching the lock tab and grabbing the inner electrical connector and lifting up. So I have to do this on all 19 of these. The new circuit board, by the way, comes with new vibration dampening connectors. But you do not want to loosen the bolts on the circuit board with, or the Phillips head screws on these, without first having um, undone all of these. Oh, there's the 20th one right there. I thought there were 20. <laughs> 
There's 20 on later model uh, fourth generation Priuses, like 2017. And there's, ooh, I pulled that one out too far. And there's 21 on earlier models. So you want to just pull up just slightly. I pulled out way too hard on the one. I'll have to be careful and get it back in. Okay, they are all loose. We want them to be able to lift up and down and be free in their electrical connectors. And as I said, I damaged a couple of them, which makes it difficult to pull them back out. When they push back down, they still make a connection, but they, they are more difficult to pull out once you've damaged the uh, little plastic tab. Okay, so I've got all 20 of the vibration dampening electrical connectors uh, loosened up. So now we will take out the Phillips head screws. So there is a rubber, like a grommet and a flat ring or a flat washer underneath it. All of that goes together with the rubber facing down. Okay, so there are 12 of those Phillip head screws um, with the little rubber, I'm sure they're vibration damper uh, washers there also. Then we have three Phillips head screws that hold the electrical connector of the circuit board to the aluminum housing below it, but this, this electrical connector does not come off the circuit board, or it should not come off. Now the circuit board is very delicate. It's got a whole bunch of surface mount, little tiny components, uh, the slightest little bend, and I think you're going to damage this board. There are two alignment dowels right here that keep the board centered over all of the little terminal pins that these vibration dampening um, electrical connectors fit down on. There's all these tiny, tiny little delicate, it just scares me to even look at them. They're, they're so small and so delicate, but you're just going to lift straight up like that on the circuit board. And then uh, we need to set this down on this anti-static mat to keep from damaging it with electrostatic discharge. Don't take the new one out of its anti-static bag until you're ready to put it back on here. Now, if you look right here below the motor generator control computer circuit board that we just removed, we've got some extremely small pins sticking up all over the place that interface with the back of the circuit board here, they just stick up through those holes there and they get pinched and held back down or held together continuity when you depress or lock those vibration damping connectors back in place. So we've got some electrical connectors or terminals right here. Uh, this is for the DC to DC uh, converter and I put filter capacitor monitor, but I was wrong. I was looking at the wiring diagram and I realized that is just a voltage monitor for the, the high voltage monitor going into the DC to DC converter. We have three phase output to the MG1 and MG2 voltage monitoring circuits right here. 
we have a smoothing capacitor monitoring circuit and then all of these little tiny terminals here and let me tip it sideways so you can see it better in the video here look at how tiny and of course gold gold plated and those should not be touched uh, with your fingers they need to not ever be bent they got, they've got to be kept straight but those are the control wires and voltage sense wires for all seven actually there's 14 uh, IGBTs that are used in this inverter converter. We have t six per electric motors. So MG1 has six, MG2 has six. And then there are two that are used in the step up of the voltage and the step down of the voltage with the reactor or the buck boost uh, converter uh, for boosting the voltage above the 207.2 volt battery voltage that we have clear up to on this fourth generation 600 volts so we can add almost another 400 volts through a boost converter okay we've disassembled the top of the inverter converter as far as we are supposed to but i like to take things apart f farther than i'm supposed to whenever i can and so we are actually going to separate the upper and lower halves here uh, in a few minutes and show you what's inside there also but technically there's nothing else serviceable in the upper half and in some of the lower half but clear underneath on the bottom is the dc to dc converter and that is a serviceable uh, component so let's Let's turn this around so that you can see the cooling pipes here on the end. As a matter of fact, I'll just lay it on its end now. I'll stick it straight up so we can get a better view with our overhead camera here. So we've got coolant from, or I'm sorry, coolant going to the reservoir off of this coolant fitting and coolant from the automatic transmission cooler which is external on this model rather than internal um, on the lower fitting uh, for us to separate the upper and lower halves or to even change the entire inverter converter assembly we need to disconnect this transfer pipe right here a wrench here so this this one right here okay so we'll undo this top bolt and these two bottom bolts that hold it in place I'm going to set this motor generator control computer on the other side here, get it out of the way. And then we will lift off this plastic transfer tube right here. Now, if this is full of coolant, then at this point, we need to tip it They suggest putting a couple of blocks of wood underneath it and tip it up like this and allow the coolant to drain out and continue to drain and continue to drain and until there's nothing else left in there. Uh, tip, it, tip it straight up if you need. Just be careful not to damage those uh, the DC to DC converter output or 14 and a half volt output and the two coolant pipes there. Also, with this top cover removed, <laughs> be real careful not to touch any of those uh, little pins there. Now, let me show you what will happen if you undo the upper plastic plugs here, the upper coolant fittings.
So let me undo these four fittings. I'm going to keep all these coolant fittings and their bolts together in a Ziploc bag here. All right, then we can pull up or out on the coolant fitting from the, or the, the one that leaves the inverter, it goes to the coolant reservoir. And then the other one that receives the fluid from the bottom of the inverter converter, the DC to DC converter, it comes here and it goes in here. I want you to notice that these have these stick down inside and connect to coolant pipes that are down internal to this inverter converter assembly. So what I'm trying to say is if you, before draining the inverter converter, took these out and then you try to turn them over, if you look closely there, you can see that those pipes do not extend beyond the housing of the inverter converter and coolant will run down inside of the electronics that are in in here and uh, could pr uh, damage things, could become a conductive path. Uh, it's just a huge mess. You, you don't want to do that. And it tells you in this service information to, to avoid that. Okay, now let's turn this whole thing upside down. All these little delicate pins on the upper portion of the inverter converter are recessed below the housing so they're fine just like that so let's take off the DC to DC converter cover here next looks like I've just got eight bolts keep those bolts separate this cover is also pretty much glued on with that form in place gasket sealer so you've got to pry up very carefully and use razor blade flat edge to get that to break loose. So we'll set that off to the side. Now if you look inside here you can see the DC to DC converter assembly. So We've got this whole DC to DC converter assembly. We've got these two bolts right here that are the high voltage connection from the battery. When the battery plugs in, the battery cables, the two orange big heavy cables from the battery plug in, they provide power directly to this DC to DC converter assembly. And for those of you that don't remember or don't know, the DC to DC converter just takes the higher voltage, whatever that may be, 200 to 600 volts and steps it down to 14 and a half or so volts to charge your 12 volt battery and the rest of the vehicle runs on 12 volts it's only the transmission the inverter converter and the air conditioning system that run on high voltage on most cars some of them have a um, power steering power steering system that's high voltage as well. Okay, now the DC DC converter is just a bolted in housing right here. So we have one electrical connector right here. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts, eight bolts that hold it down. So I'm going to just undo those eight bolts and the output to our 12 volt system needs to be unbolted as well. I believe that's the last bolt. So we'll keep all those together for the DC to DC converter. And now we can just lift out the DC to DC converter. So I'm going to just lift that straight up. Here it is right here. 
This is all one piece. It is serviceable. You can buy this from a Toyota dealer. This is liquid cooled. That's a heat sink on the bottom there and sensitive electronics. So we'll keep it here on our mat. If we look inside the, the inverter converter housing here, there's a big seal ring, this black ceiling ring here. And you can see where coolant comes in, goes around and goes back out in this lower housing here. So when you change the DC to DC converter, you're going to need to change this gasket that goes with it. All right, those are the three pieces that are serviceable in this inverter converter assembly. We've got the DC to DC converter, that's one. We've got the motor generator control computer, that's number two. And the, everything else you see right here, this entire housing is number three. And of course you can get the entire the entire unit as well. Uh, what we have left over here, and I'm going to disassemble the rest of this, is we have another capacitor uh, right here. We have, typically have three capacitors in a hybrid uh, system. We have the smoothing capacitor to smooth out the regenerative braking uh, or generator uh, three-phase uh, full rectified uh, inverter voltage bumps. And then we have a couple of filter uh, capacitors as well. So let's see what's inside of this because it's, it's really neat uh, to see what's inside. But once again, it's extremely fragile, extremely delicate little pieces. We have some bolts that we're not supposed to take out. I'm taking out next. All right, there's all four of those. And then we have the bolts around the outside of the, the housing. It looks like we've got three here. One, two, three on the other side and one on the end. So seven, seven bolts total. to separate the two case halves. Now, if you ever go into one of these, just for exploration's sake, uh, when you separate these two case halves, you must do two things at once. One, you gotta break that seal of the form in place gasket sealer. And there's a couple of pry points on here. Once you break that, you've got to lift straight up. You can't tilt it any direction at all because we've got all these little tiny pins here that go to the vibration dampening electrical connectors and we don't want to bend those pins. So now I'm going to just lift straight up. There we go. And you can see there's the top of our inverter converter assembly. If I carefully turn that over, you can actually see the IGBTs right over here. All of these rows of solid state electronics there are the 14 IGBTs. We'll take a look at those here in a little more uh, detail here in just a moment. But let's look at this bottom housing. We've got the reactor, the suppressor, or the, the reactor, the inductor or, and suppressor that is used to bump up uh, the 207.2 volts to as high as 600 volts. It's just a great big coil of wire. It cycled on and off. Uh, on the previous Prius, it was a thousand times a second. I don't know what this one is. As that cycles on and off, it charges the smoothing capacitor, the great big capacitor that's, that's in this upper case here. We have the module that drives it. Uh, over here and electrical connectors that go down to the DC to DC converter, that little harness we unplugged and, and so on. So let me set the, the lower half of the inverter converter assembly out of the way here. And let's look at the upper half because it has some very interesting uh, components inside of it. Okay, we have our high voltage wires from the battery come in right here and they connect 
of course, to the cable that goes to the air conditioning compressor and to over here to the IGBTs. And these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows of IGBTs right here. Um, there's two IGBTs per row. And we have the high voltage DC power on the top of this plate, high, high voltage uh, negative side of the DC power underneath that plate. Uh, they, as they turn on and off, come over here on the, uh, let's see, this would be the passenger side of the inverter converter and connect to the output terminals to the MG1 and the MG2 electric motors. Here on this other side, we've got the great big smoothing capacitor. But then if you look down inside right here, we've got the resistor that discharges that big smoothing capacitor. So when you disconnect the, the high voltage battery and the service information tells you to wait for so many minutes, it's that resistor that's discharging it over time. And however much time it takes, uh, I'm sure that the time in the service manual is more than sufficient uh, to get it discharged, even at the highest voltage uh, it may have may have been. But you need to verify that with a multimeter um, before going in. Okay. Um, even more interesting is let's look at the coolant passages here. We've got the two coolant pipes coming in. And then if you look right here, you can see the two coolant pipes. And if we look on the top side here, all of those little silver brackets in between the individual black IGBT modules are coolant passages. So the coolant comes in it goes in between every one of those IGBTs. So we have seven IGBTs. Looks like there are uh, nine. No, there were eight coolant passages. So there's a coolant passage, one on each side of those uh, IGBTs, but two of them share the coolant passages on the inside. You can see heat sink compound, thermal transfer grease, the white stuff in there. It's got a great big what looks like a leaf spring in here that is holding tension on that pack of IGBTs and everything is welded together. You can't disassemble it any more than I've got it disassembled here uh, because it's all uh, welded together. So I thought that was interesting to uh, see uh, what's going on inside here. As I said before, this inverter converter is from a 2017 Prius Eco, the one with the 207.2 volt battery. Uh, you can get a Prius with the nickel metal hydride battery. I'm sure it would have an inverter converter very similar to this, but it would have probably different part numbers for the motor generator com computer or control computer um, and possibly some other things because of how nickel metal hydride batteries are charged versus lithium-ion uh, batteries. Uh, we've seen that th there is a DC to DC converter that's ser fully serviceable and the motor generator uh, control computer in the top half that is fully serviceable except you need these pliers to remove the vibration dampening connectors. Uh, don't try to use a pick or a screwdriver because you'll just damage them uh, unless you have better luck than I do. Now all I have to do is put it back together and put it back in the car and uh, make it work. Uh, thank you for watching.